Hey guys, welcome back finally to another crocheting video. So for the past few months, I have been working on a commissioned cardigan. And you've probably already seen these all over the internet, and it is the Puffy Flower Cardigan. I've never made one of these before, so I was really excited to start working on it. So sit back and relax as I walk you through my process and maybe learn a few things along the way as well. So first things first are the materials. I used this gray colored yarn for the cardigan and the colors white and yellow to make daisies as the puffy flowers. I used a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and used a 7 millimeter hook only for the flowers. I also used three of these white buttons, darning needles and scissors, and finally, tape measure and stitch markers. So this cardigan consisted of five main pieces. I made two rectangles for the front panels, a bigger piece for the back panel, and two more pieces for the sleeves. After attaching them together, I added all the ribbing and lastly attached all the puffy flowers. I know, it's easier said than done. Now, if you've watched my vlogs from our trip to the States, you've probably already seen these clips before. And yes, I started this cardigan way back in December 2022, but only got around to finishing it this June. This cardigan took much longer than expected for me to finish because, as usual, I encountered some mishaps along the way. But we'll get to that part of the video as we go. So, as you see me doing here, I started with crocheting the front panels. This from the get-go already took me a while to finish because I had to keep unraveling my work since I couldn't get the right size that I needed. I'm pretty sure this happens to other crocheters as well, but when I make a foundation chain that amounts to a certain length or size, essentially I will work through the chain to create my rows. But as I do that, my measurement just expands. Like when I have a foundation chain that measures 10 inches, my work will eventually expand to 12 inches instead of the 10 that I started with. I know people have counteracted this problem by using the chainless foundation methods, and I've tried that before, but sometimes I still would choose to do the traditional foundation chain, especially when working with not so basic stitches. I just find myself second guessing the measurement of my foundation chain, and I end up making a chain that measures a few inches smaller than the measurement I actually need. I recently also started using a bigger hook when making my foundation chains, and I found them to be much stretchier with this method. I'm not sure if it helps, but I think it still kind of does something with the size problem. So after several tries, I finally got the right size for my front panel and was able to make two identical pieces. Once those were done, I started working on the back panel which is twice the size of the front panel with extra room for the neck ribbing slash the button band. I also took the liberty to choose any stitch that I thought would look good for a cardigan and decided to use the herringbone half double crochet. For my front panel, I did a chain of 25 plus 1 while I chained 66 plus 1 for my back panel. To make this stitch, I chained 1 as my turning chain before starting a new row. I yarned over and inserted my hook into the first stitch of the row and pulled up a loop. Now this is where things get a little bit different from the regular half double crochet. To make things a bit easier for me, I like to hold the middle loop on my hook with my thumb to create more room, and then I'm going to pull the first loop through the second loop. With two loops on my hook, I yarned over and pulled through all two loops. And there you have the herringbone half double crochet. So once again, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, and pull up a loop. I hold down the middle loop and pull the first loop through. Yarn over and pull through all two loops on the hook. In the tutorials I've seen, 
People usually do a chain two as their turning chain, but when I do that, it just creates an uneven edge to my work, which I really don't like. So I just went with a turning chain one and it works just fine for me. I just continued to make more rows until my back panel reached my desired size. Now that I finished my two front panels and my back panel, it was time to sew the shoulder seams. All I did was put the panels up against each other with the wrong side facing out and I whip stitched the stitches together with a darning needle. Once I was done with that, I proceeded to make the sleeves. And for this, I decided to go with a different approach. It was my first time making sleeves this way, and I'm glad that it turned out pretty nicely. So essentially, I started by making the sleeve cuff, and then working my way up from there to make the sleeve in a round. I used the single crochet back loop only for the cuff. And to do that, chain any amount that equals to the width that you want your cuff to be. I chained 8 plus 1 as my turning chain. I skipped the first chain from my hook and made a single crochet all the way down. After finishing the first row, I chained 1 and turned my work. From this point on, I will only be working into the back loop of each stitch to create a ribbing effect. I continued making single crochets but only inserting my hook into the back loop as I made my way down the row. I continued making more rows until I had my desired length. I then slip stitched the edges of my sleeve cuff to connect them into a circle. Flipping the cuff right side out, I moved on to crocheting the actual sleeve. I chained one and made a herringbone half double crochet into the first two ribbing stitches. Because I wanted a more puff sleeve effect, I needed to make some increases. So going into the same stitch that I just went into, I added another herringbone half double crochet as my increase. From here, I just repeated the pattern of increasing on every second stitch around the cuff. The puffiness of the sleeve will depend on the number of increases that you do. So if you want the end of your sleeve to be puffier, you can add more increases and vice versa if you want a less puffy sleeve. Mm -hmm. 
As I reached the last stitch on the cuff, I just added one more herringbone half double crochet to fill in the gap and slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. I chained one and turned my work. I learned that turning your work after every row when you're working in a round will give you a seam that goes straight up instead of going in a slant. So I like to keep that in mind for future projects. After turning my work, I went into the next stitch and made a herringbone half double crochet. Since I needed the sleeve to be a little bit bigger, I added another increase into the third stitch of the row. I continued to increase on every third stitch until I reached the end of this round. I made one last herringbone half double crochet into that last stitch and slip stitched into the first stitch of the round. I chained one and turned my work. From here on out, I won't be doing any more increases, so I continued making one herringbone half double crochet into every stitch of the round. I continued to repeat this until I reached the desired length of my sleeve. Okay, so remember the mishap that I mentioned at the start of this video, which prolonged the process of this cardigan? Well, this is where things went downhill a little bit. As I finished my second sleeve, I completely ran out of yarn. I had used up all 900 grams of yarn that I bought. Now, you might be thinking that I could easily buy new yarn to cope with this problem, and of course, that was the first solution that occurred to me as well. I checked the online shop where I bought the yarn, and just to my luck, the shop was on vacation, which meant that they were not active and I had no way of contacting them. Of course, I also tried to order from other shops as well that sold the same type of yarn that I used. But since I could only order online, I can't exactly see the colors of the yarn in person. And unfortunately, I tried ordering from three different shops, but none of them matched the shade of grey that I needed. At this point, I didn't want to risk buying from another shop just for me to receive the wrong shade of grey again. I was struggling to think of a way of how I can still save this cardigan with the yarn that I already have. I considered shortening the panels and using the excess yarn, but with the second sleeve still missing a couple of rows, and still having to make the bottom ribbing and the entire button band, I figured that I still won't have enough yarn to do all of that. But there was still one solution that I was considering, and it was to redo the entire cardigan, but in a different stitch. I know, it's very time consuming, it pained me as much to think about doing it, but I didn't think I had any other choice. Since the herringbone half double crochet was a pretty dense stitch, my theory was that if I used a longer but less condensed stitch, it would take up less yarn but cover more area. That way, I could still achieve my desired sizes while using up less yarn. So now it was time to test this theory. I took one of the sleeves and started making a new one with its unraveled yarn. I decided to use the extended half double crochet, and since it was definitely a taller and less condensed stitch than the herringbone half double crochet, I had high hopes that this solution would make up for the yarn that I needed to finish the entire cardigan. Now, 
When I finished one sleeve with the new stitch, this small portion of the sleeve cuff is the yarn I had left from the first version of the sleeve. This proved to me that using the extended half double crochet could actually just work and solve my problem. So I moved on to making my second sleeve. And same thing, I used single crochet back loops only for the sleeve cuff, attached the edges to make a circle, did one round of increases, and worked my way up and around with the extended half double crochet. Unfortunately, I now had two completed sleeves. Afterwards, I had to tackle the front and back panels. I do have to say though that I shouldn't have weaved in the tails of the shoulder seams right after sewing because it took me so long to find them. I was so close to giving up and just cutting my way through the seams, but then again, I needed all the yarn that I could get. And luckily enough, I still managed to find the tail ends. Once all the panels were separated, I started to make my new front panels with the extended half double crochet. To make this stitch, I chained 23 plus 2 for the foundation chain of my front panel. Yarn over and skipping the first two chains from my hook, I inserted my hook into the third chain and pulled up a loop. Yarn over and pull through one loop. Yarn over again and pull through all three loops. And that's how you do the extended half double crochet. When I reached the end of my chain, I chained two, which doesn't count as a stitch, and turned my work to continue making more rows of the extended half double crochet. Soon enough, I finished my two front panels and moved on to making the back panel in which I chained 62 plus 2. I'm not sure if you can notice throughout the video, but I actually dyed my hair red the moment we came back to the Philippines. It was honestly an impulsive move, but it was such a fun change for me. I ended up liking my red hair much more than I expected and I really want to keep it for as long as I can. Fortunately, I had enough yarn to finish all the main panels and still had some yarn to spare for the ripping. Again, I sewed the shoulder seams with the whip stitch and also did the same when attaching the sleeves down to attaching the sides of the cardigan. Once all the panels were attached, this is what the cardigan was looking like. And although I'm not making this for myself, I still like wearing the piece to see how everything looks when worn and I think it's looking good so far. Finally, it was time to make the ribbing. I also made sure to take into account the type of ribbing I would do since I'm working with a limited amount of yarn. In the end, I decided to do the half double crochet worked in the third loop, which is also known as the Royal Ridge Stitch. I know, I use half double crochets way too much. For the width of my ribbing, I chained five, plus one as my turning chain. I skipped the first chain from my hook and went into the second chain. Except this time, 
I worked into the back ridge of the chain, which are these bumps at the bottom. Working into the back ridges will give the edge of my work a cleaner look afterwards. Yarn over, insert the hook into the back ridge, and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook to make a half double crochet. As I reach the end of the row with the regular half double crochets, I chain two and turn my work. Now if you are going to make a normal half double crochet, you're going to insert your hook into this V shape which makes up the top of the stitch. But to make the royal ridge stitch, turn your work to the side and you will see this loop underneath the V shape of the stitch. This is the third loop which is where I will be working into. Yarn over and insert your hook into that third loop and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Again, I'm going into the loop that is underneath this V shape here and make a half double crochet. Once I reached end of the row, I chain two, turned my work, and continued to repeat this process. As I made more rows, you can notice that by working into the third loop, it pushes out the V-shapes of the stitches to make these ridges which will essentially work as my ribbing. I continued to make more rows until it was long enough for the bottom hem of my cardigan. With the cardigans wrong side out, I then used the whip stitch to sew them together. This is what I had when I finished sewing, and then I moved on to working on the button band. For the button band, I chained 6 plus 1 as my foundation chain, and continued to make the royal ridge stitch. Once I got to the third row, I made the first buttonhole. I made half double crochets worked in the third loop of the first two stitches and chain two. I skipped the next two stitches and made two more half double crochets worked in the third loop of the last two stitches. I chained two and turned my work. When making the next row, the third loop of the stitches are different since there was the chain two from the previous row. So I just went into these ridges at the back of the stitch or the chain and worked my way through the rest of the row. I really don't know how else to explain this, but I hope you can understand what I'm doing through the video.
ended up making three buttonholes in total and continued to do the Royal Ridge stitch for the rest of the button band. By the time I reached the end, I was so relieved that I had just enough yarn for the length that I needed. Since I didn't have any yarn left, I used thread to attach the button band to the cardigan. From the huge pack of buttons I had, I chose these three big ones. Making sure that the buttons are aligned with the buttonholes, I sewed them onto the cardigan as well. Now it was time for the final touch, the puffy flowers. For the flowers, I used a 7mm crochet hook and used white yarn for the petals and a pastel yellow color for the center of the flower. I actually had to go through several tutorials on YouTube just finding a video that I can follow without straining my hands too much. You see, the key to making puffy flowers is to have a lot of loops of yarn for each petal to get that puffiness. Some tutorials I've seen had about 20 loops per petal, which I found so hard to complete, especially when the yarn I'm using is pretty thick. Because of how many loops there were for one petal, which was also only worked into one stitch, my hook just couldn't go through all of those loops and it really strained my hand when I tried making it. Fortunately, I found a tutorial which I was able to follow with less strain. To make my puffy flowers, I followed a tutorial by Chenda DIY, which I will link in the description box. Her flowers were done differently in a way that one petal was worked into two stitches and also called for less loops on the hook which made the petals easier to complete all the while still giving the puffiness that I was looking for. I spent quite some time finishing all the petals first before making all the yellow centers and then attaching them together to complete the flower. The bottom of my flowers weren't looking too pretty, but it was fine since they won't be visible anyway. I was asked to only add puffy flowers on the top half of the cardigan, so I only made about 13 to cover the upper area. Once all the flowers were finished, I had this big batch of puffy flowers that were ready to be attached to the cardigan. Using the white yarn and a darning needle, I meticulously sewed each flower to the cardigan. I'm not sure if you can tell in the video, but I'm only inserting my needle on the bottom of the flower and the outermost loops of the cardigan. This way, the stitches won't be seen on the inside of the cardigan, which gives it that cleaner finish. I found a video that kind of explains the sewing method, which I'll also link down below. And as you can see, there are no stitches visible at all. If you're wondering where I hide the tails of the yarn that I used to sew, I kind of just tucked them under the flower or threaded them through the petals. The petals were puffy, so it definitely had room to hide the tails. After sewing on the last few flowers, this six month long project finally came to an end. Although I encountered a major setback while making this cardigan, I'm so glad and so relieved that everything still worked out. I'm very happy and satisfied with how this cardigan turned out, and I've already sent it over to its new owner and she loves it as well. As the video comes to an end, I hope you enjoyed watching my process and I hope you learned a thing or two throughout my journey. This concludes yet another crochet cardigan video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content in the future. Thank you so so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye guys!